planted in healthy soils and who are also consuming those pork, those beef, those chicken, which are uh, grazed uh, or which uh, feed on those uh, healthy crops. So uh, interconnected po yan, yung tatlong to. So you can see the interconnection of soils, the crops, and also humans. So iyan po ang napiling uh, theme for the International Year of Soils. So when um, the Global Soil Partnership of the Food and, Ag Food and Agriculture Organization um, together with the UN General Assembly declared the 2015 as the International Year of Soils, they, they provided us some materials regarding the, the, the link between healthy soils in the farm to nutritious food in our table. So this is really a very appropriate topic because our theme for this uh, 12 uh, NOAA is farm to table. So you can see here, I will discuss to you in a few minutes, paano ba nililink yung healthy soils sa ating mga uh, bukid at yung pagkakaroon natin ng masustansya at ligtas na pagkain sa ating mga mesa. So according to FAO, there is a very direct link between soil health and human health because 95% of our food comes from our soils. Agri po ba tayo? Yes. So 95% of our food comes from our soil. Kasi yung 5%, ano po yung uh, ginagawa? Iba na dun yung iba't ibang technologies like hydroponics, aeroponics. But in reality, 95% of our food comes from our soil. And it is evident now that in several parts of the world, particularly in developing countries, micronutrient malnutrition is really uh, a, a, a big problem particularly in the marginalized uh, sector of those countries, particularly in the Philippines. So, um, FAO uh, stated that food grown on nutrient-impoverished soils contributes to systemic human malnutrition because of the lack of important micronutrients in the human diet, such as iron, magnesium, zinc, copper, and iodine. And soil health and its fertility have a direct influence on the nutrient content of our food crops. So, in conventional agriculture, ano usually yung mga input na inilalagay natin sa ating mga uh, lupa? Urea, it's 4600, 46% nitrogen. So, we have um, um, 1620. We have 1414, complete fertilizer. Ano usually lang ang naman yung mga uh, synthetic fertilizers na yun? Nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. It doesn't have any micronutrients. So if you will continually uh, put those uh, synthetic fertilizers in our soils, eventually magkakaroon ng tinatawag natin na uh, silent form of soil degradation, yung tinatawag na soil mining. So eventually, pati yung mga micronutrients na inherent dun sa lupa ay nawawala. And then, kung itinagdalim ka doon sa lupa na yun, na halos na wala na ng micronutrients, and at nagdadagdag ka pa rin at nagdadagdag ng mga synthetic fertilizers, na wala halos micronutrients, macro lang yun, NPK, so magkakaroon ng tinatawag na, na soil mining. So maapektuhan talaga yung quality ng, pagka, ng, ng pananim na itinatanim natin sa mga lupa na impoverished na, o kulang na ng nutrients. So iyan yan, for the longest time, we are using um, those synthetic fertilizers in excessive amount, katkalo na sa mga plantation crops. And then if you if you if you will look at those soils, talagang halos pa ng micronutrients sa mga o napakababa ng mga micronutrients, deficient na in micronutrients. So um, if the necessary micronutrients are not present in the soil, this impacts directly on the food system by failing to deliver adequate amount of micronutrients to meet human requirements. So if the rice that we are consuming or if the fruits and vegetables that we are eating is um, lacking of micronutrients, eventually, wala rin tayong kukuhang sustansya. Pati tayo magkakaroon ng micronutrient deficiencies. Hindi lang yung soil natin. So there is still an evidence about the relation between deficiencies of zinc, selenium, and iodine in humans and related deficiencies of those microelements in our soils. So when we talk about soil health, kanina pa natin yung intention, yung sinasabi natin soil health. 
So, basically, when we talk about soil health, it could be equated with soil quality. And these are the three, the, the three um, uh, categories for the properties of soils. We have physical properties, chemical properties, and biological properties. When we talk about physical properties, these are the soil texture, soil structure, the color, and that. And then for the chemical properties of our soils, these are the the the, the, the amount of uh, macro and micronutrients present in our so in our soil, as well as the cation exchange capacity that we call pH, or the indicator of acidity na ating adupa. And when we talk about the biological properties of soils, ito po yung um, uh, level ng mga macro and microorganisms sa ating mga lupa. Macroorganisms like uh, mga earthworms, uh, nematodes, iyan po yan. And then microorganisms, bacteria, fungi, and the like. So, yung biological properties. Kapag ka yung maayos po ang ating physical properties, chemical properties, and biological properties, or naka-integrate yung tatlong properties na to, and optimize, yun po yung tinatawag natin na soil health. Ito po po yung na, na, na nakashade dun sa gitna. So this is a taken from the Cornell University Soil Health Assessment Manual. So ano po ba ang katangian ng isang matusog na lupa? Kasi hindi tayo nagsasabi tayo na ang uh, mataba ang ating lupa. So dapat baguhin natin yung concept na yun. Sabihin natin, malusog na lupa. Kasi hindi po akit mataba, ay malusog na lupa natin. So, um, ano po ba ang mga katangian ng healthy soils? It has a good soil till. When we talk about soil till, this is the overall physical character of the soil in terms of the texture and the structure of our soil. It also, uh, it should have also a uh, sufficient depth. So, ayaw natin ng masyadong uh, mababaw ang ating lupa kasi hindi masyadong makakagalaw yung mga ugat ng ating pananim at hindi nila makukuha yung mga sustansya na kailangan nila. Sufficient but not excess supply of nutrients. So, sufficient, dapat uh, tama na yung level ng ating uh, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, including the level of uh, micronutrients like uh, copper, zinc, uh, molybdenum, um, um, magnesium. So, dapat uh, sufficient, hindi siya dapat, hindi rin pwedeng excess. Kasi pag excess, nandun na tayo sa level ng toxicity naman. Kung masyadong mataas, for example, yung ating um, iron, magkakaroon ng iron toxicity, toxicity sa ating lupa. So, a healthy soil should have small population of pathogens and insect pests. So, dapat um, Yung mga presence, yung soilborne pathogens, population of soilborne pathogens, dapat mababa lamang sa ating, o konti lamang sa ating mga lupa. And it should have a good soil drainage in, in case magkaroon ng intense uh, or heavy rainfall, makakakuap ka agad yung ating uh, lupa by absorbing excess water. So, uh, another characteristic of a uh, healthy soil is large population of beneficial organisms. So, dapat uh, yung mga microorganisms po natin, uh, it has several or multiple uh, functions in nutrient cycling, the composition of organic matter, and maintenance of soil structure. Sa healthy soils, mababa rin ang weed pressure o hindi masyadong madamo. Hindi naman natin gusto ng walang damo. Kasi uh, walang vegetative cover sa lupa natin from secretion. Kaya mababa lamang dapat ang weed pressure o hindi ganun kadabo. Our soil should also be free of chemicals and toxins that may harm the crop. So, dapat uh, ang ating uh, mga lupa ay hindi contaminated, for example, ng mga heavy metals like uh, uh, lead, cadmium, arsenic, para hindi din yun ma-absorb na ating mga halaman at eventually ma-absorb natin. So these are the different uh, characteristics of healthy soils o katangian ng isang malusog na lupa. So when we talk about uh, uh, soil functions naman o the importance of soils, ang ating mga lupa hindi lang po natin yan tinataniman. Hindi lang for food production. So it has really several uh, several uh, uses. So for 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 item number one, 
healthy soils are the basis for healthy food production. Siguro wala na tayong katanungan dyan. Explain ko na kanina kung ano yung connection between healthy soils and healthy crops and livestock. And eventually healthy humans. And 95%, tindaan po natin, 95% of our food comes from our soil. Another, uh, another uh, importance of our soil, it is the foundation for vegetation. Which is cultivated not only for food, but also for feed, for fuel. So, uso uso yung mga biofuels, uh, fiber, textiles, and also medicinal products. And for the third item, soils host a quarter of planet's biodiversity. So, ang soils po natin, meron din siyang mga e essential ecosystem services. So, sa isang teaspoon po ng, isang teaspoon ng soil, there are billions of microorganisms present there. And when we, when we look at the number of species present in our soil, there are several species of earthworms, 20 to 30 species of mites, 50 to 100 species of insects, tens of species of nematodes, hundreds of species of fungi, and perhaps thousands of species of bacteria and actinomycetes. So, napakayaman po ng biodiversity ng ating lupa. So, currently po, may tinatawag tayo Global Soil Biodiversity Initiative. So, uh, nag-account po ngayon, ano ba yung soil biodiversity status sa iba't ibang panig ng mundo? Because of this, uh, really, uh, very important uh, functions of our soils. Another, uh, another one is, soils help to combat and adapt to climate change by playing a key role in the carbon cycle. So, yung mga soils natin, nagsisequester din sila ng carbon. So, napakahalaga po yun for climate change uh, mitigation. And soils uh, store and filter water, improving our resilience to floods and droughts. So, kung maganda ang quality ng ating lupa, i-absorb niya yung excess water in case na may heavy rain po. Pero kung iyan po ay uh, napakababa na ng organic matter content, pangit na ang uh, uh, ba uh, bababa na ang nutrient content, in terms of uh, uh, sa drainage or filtering capacity ay mababa na, hindi niya magagawa itong function na to. So, dapat po talaga nating uh, uh, ingatan ang ating mga lupa. And another one, soil is a non-renewable resource. Bakit po non-renewable resource ang ating mga lupa? Because 10, yung 10 cm po ng topsoil, it will take around 2,000 years for that to be formed. So, kung mawala yung 10 cm na ating mga lupa, hindi niyo mapapalitan within this lifetime. That's why the soil is considered as a non-renewable resource. So, nabanggit ko na po kanina, these are just some of the infographics uh, uh, provide, provided by uh, FAO Global Soil Partnership. So 95% of food comes from our soil. This is where the food begins. So napakaganda pong infographics about our soils. And uh, aside from FAO, there are several uh, experts um, in the field of uh, agriculture, particularly in the field of uh, soil science, uh, saying this, this um, statements. So the first thing to do is to have good soil. Even the best seeds cannot do anything in sand and gravel. Agree po ba tayo? Yes. So even if we have the best seeds, the best technologies, if we don't have good soil, our agricultural productivity will be affected. So um, another statement is from Dr. Uh, Ratan Lal, soil scientist from Ohio State University. He said that soil and water issues have been taken for granted. It is a problem that is not going to be, to be solved. It's going to get worse before it gets better. Medyo pessimistic na konti, ano po. Pero uh, this is also uh, a reality. Kung titignan po ninyo, hindi po natin masyadong binibigyan ng pansin yung mga soil and water issues natin. Nakatutok tayo kadalasan how to, how to, uh, uh, have good seeds, 
how to um, do uh, better post harvest uh, post harvest uh, mechanization uh, strategies. How to have um, new varieties. Pero kadalasan, na, na, nakakalimutan yung aspect ng ating mga lupa, yung kahalagahan ng ating lupa. So, even though our soils are uh, important, that is often uh, disregarded. And as I have mentioned before, uh, and also um, stated in the uh, United Nations Convention to Combat Desertification, Non-Degradation and Trout uh, Thematic Fact Sheet, Soil has an excellent uh, carbon sequestration capacity. World soils hold more organic carbon that, than that held by the atmosphere as carbon dioxide and vegetation combined. So, yun nga, kahit uh, mahalaga ang ating lupa, nadidegrade po ito. And at present, 33% of the soils in the world are considered degraded. And in the Philippines, Based on our uh, assessment of land degradation, 38% or 11.45 million hectares uh, of our lands are, are already considered vulner vulnerable to land degradation and experiencing moderate to severe er erosion. So, um, what could possibly hurt and make our soil sick? So yun nga, nagkakaroon po tayo ng soil degradation and when our soils are badly damaged, it, we couldn't, we couldn't uh, 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 re reverse it to back to its original state within this lifetime. So ang, ang hirap po na palitan ang nawalang uh, malusog na lupa. So uh, we should remember that for us to have a 10 centimeter of topsoil, it would take around 2,000 years for it to be formed. And these are just some examples. And when we say uh, soil degradation or land degradation, it could, this could be uh, natural or it could be man-made or anthropogenic. When we say natural, kung may mga volcanic eruptions na nadadamage din po ating mga lupa. Uh, itong nasa right side na picture, this is a picture of the Lahar, a little area in Pampanga. And then the picture on the left, ito po ay yung may mga grasses na may mga kogon na. Ibig sabihin, hindi na ganun kaproductive ang lupa. So there are several forms of soil degradation. And uh, in some cases, Nagsisimula yan sa mga ukit-ukit muna, yung tinatawag natin mga uh, sheet and wheel erosion. And eventually, pag napabayaan, nagkakaroon ng mga galis o malalalim na buka ng lupa. And pag nangyari po yun, nagkakaroon tayo ng unhealthy soils and naapektuhan ang ating productivity uh, sa ating mga croplands and grazing lands. Okay. So, ang unang form po ng uh, soil degradation na i-discuss ko po sa inyo ay erosion. I hope I make the Tagalog right pag buho ng lupa. So, nag-i-erod po ang ating mga lupa, lalo na dun sa mga dahilig na lugar or stooping areas. And uh, the loss of topsoil makes our lands less suitable for growing crops. Sino po yung taga-region to dito? Okay, I'm to sa table na yun. So the picture on the left, yung makikita po ninyo na may mga uh, uh, ukit sa lupa as, uh, as uh, an evidence of uh, uh, soil erosion. Yan po uh, was taken uh, in Isabela. It's a corn growing area. And most uh, corn growing areas in the Philippines right now are planted to uh, bitty corn and round up red corn. So, ano po ang connection niyan sa soil erosion? So, sa mga corn production areas natin, lalo na dun sa mga steep slopes o sa mga sloping areas, nakakapagtanim sila ng corn. Hinang hindi tinitin ang lupa, na hindi masyadong dinadamo. Bakit? Kasi yung Roundup Ready Corn, it's, it has herbicide tolerant gene. So, kahit anong apply mo ng, ng herbicides, ay hindi mamamatay ang iyong, ang, ang iyong halaman. So, at makakapagtanim ka kahit kung sa talagang very, very uh, steep slopes. So, pag gano'n ang nangyari, pag, uh, I'm not saying that uh, it's because that it's related directly with the use of the RR corn itself, but rather with the management, 
practice associated with planting are our corn. Kasi uh, mga farmers po natin, they usually have um, uh, uh, financiers na usually ang mga multinational companies when they, they, they have this, when they sell this, uh, this corn, this herbicide tolerant corn, nakapackage na yan together with several bottles or several liters of herbicides. Tama po ba? So, uh, pag masyadong madami yung herbicides, nasisira po ang ating lupa at nawawala ng vegetative cover. So, pag nawala po yung vegetative cover sa ating lupa, nag i po yun. So, iyan po yung cases ngayon sa mga corn growing areas, not only in Region 2 in Tigayan and Isabela, but also I have seen this case in Bukidnon. Sa Bukidnon po, uh, based on our uh, talk with the locals, nagkaroon na ng changes sa mountain landscape uh, since they have started uh, planting their uh, areas with uh, this herbicide uh, tolerant uh, corn. So what we are doing right now is is for them to to change their management practice because we couldn't impose that they will stop using this RR corn. So kailangan turuan na po natin ang ating mga farmers how to how to uh, make their soils uh, uh, more productive, how to make their soils uh, healthier through our uh, soil uh, through our scopes of projects, soil conservation in uh, upland in stooping areas or scopes at. And uh, ang hirap po kasi i-change ang mindset ng ating mga farmers, lalo na pag tinignan po natin o concern na nila yung economic, economic, uh, mga economic concerns like yung income. So ang hirap. So yun lang, tuturuan natin sila ng proper soil and water conservation uh, measures to prevent uh, soil erosion. And pero yun ang reality, mas kita nungin po ang mga taga-region 2 at taga-region 10, kung meron pong mga taga-bukid nun, yun ay nangyayari na. And uh, we have uh, we have just uh, 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 recently approved project from the United Nations Development Program which will be uh, implemented in Bukid nun, uh early next year, uh, ongoing na po, uh, this year, na-approved na siya. And uh, the site is in... Uh, malay-balay uh, bukid nun. Na marami din po mga degraded uh, uh, soil sa ating mga corn production areas. So another form of soil degradation is uh, contamination o tinatawag na soil pollution. Ito po yung mga, lalo na dun sa mga production areas, crop production areas na malapit sa mga minahan o mga mine out areas. This is a picture in uh, Bagakay Mine in Summer Island. And after after the mining company pulled out from the site or stopped their operation, and the light ura ng mga lupa doon. So, um, and then soil pollution is really, really a big problem, especially in those uh, areas that are uh, getting industrialized, particularly in China. Mamaya may isa site po akong example sa inyo. So, number one is Bukidlon, number two is Sambanga del Norte, number three is Western Summer. Pag nagkaroon ng heavy rain po, madaling nag erode So, yun po yung case sa, ano, sa Region 8. Particularly dun sa mga industrialized areas na nila. And then yung mga industrialized areas na yun, may mga katabing crop production areas. And currently in China, food safety policies are not integrated with soil and water pollution management policies. So, uh, and this is also, uh, uh, last year naman po, nagkaroon ng issue on the uh, level of uh, heavy metals dun sa mga ini-import natin na rice from China. Kasi nakita na karamihan sa mga imported rice from China is laden with uh, heavy metals like lead, cadmium, and arsenic. So dun po sa ginawa po Code of Good Agricultural Practices for Rice na in-spearhead ng BAPS. Uh, kasama po doon yung uh, uh, na-discuss po itong issue na to and then kasama po sa mga nire-require when you uh, do GAP certification ay yung analysis for uh, uh, heavy metals sa ating mga soils. Particularly kung may perceived risk dun sa production area, malapit siya sa mga subdivision, malapit siya sa mga commercial buildings, yun po. So when we talk about organic, when we talk about organic agriculture and soil health improvement, makikita po natin sa different, sa RA100 or 68 naka-emphasize dyan ang importance ng soils. 
pati sa revised uh, Philippine National Standards in Organic Agriculture, as well as sa international level sa UNCCB. So, sa definition pa lang ng OA, makikita na natin na ang emphasis on the health of our soils. I'll just go over briefly sa, ay, briefly sa mga slides. Okay. And then, pag tinignan natin yung principles of organic agriculture, principle of health, naka-emphasize ka agad doon, health of soil, plant, animal, human, and planet. So, naka-emphasize pa lagi ang soils. Even in the uh, uh, policy statement of the law, naka-emphasize din yung fertility of the soil. So, sa RM10068, naka-emphasize po dyan na we need to do uh, uh, composting and organic fertilizer production as inputs for organic uh, uh, crop production. So, the importance of soil and water conservation technologies. And even in the, the program document, naka-emphasize din doon yung soil fertility and ecosystem management support systems. The importance of um, soil health in our uh, production uh, systems. Even in the PNS and OA, nakalagay din po yan. So, organic production systems are soil-based and should care for the soil. So, dun sa mag-discuss po mamaya sa organic standards, ay na-highlight ko lang yung ilang provisions sa standards na, na binibigyan ng importansya yung ating lupa. So, organic production systems are soil-based and should care for the soil. So, yung hydroponics, hindi po siya accepted na organic, uh, organic uh, production system. Kasi ang organic agriculture is soil-based. May nagtanong kasi kahapon tungkol sa, sa hydroponics. And then, uh, in another uh, section of the standards, in-emphasize din doon yung fertility and biological activity of the soil. The need to cultivate legumes, green manures, and deep rooting plants. And dapat po ang mga ina-apply natin organic soil amendments ay compliant with the uh, Philippine National Standards on Organic Fertilizers na eventually which will be renamed as Organic Soil Amendments. And we're going to yun ang revision ngayon. So nakalagay dyan, application of raw and decomposed manure is not allowed. So may effect po yan. If we use uh, undecomposed manure, so mataas ang level ng pathogens, and even if we are helping as salad vegetables, po ang ginamit po na, na so even if you are eating uh, uh, salad vegetables, na uh, organic salad vegetables, and then hindi po na check po puti yung uh, mga soil amendments na ginamit, may protozoa, infective parasites, dun sa mga ginamit na ano, na inputs, ay hindi rin po healthy yun. At magkakaroon tayo ng problema sa pusi. So gusto kong gusto kong i-discuss to in detail, kaya lang I only have 10 minutes more. So, um, Sa, sa, sa standards, binibigyan din ng importansya yung soil and water conservation. Paggamit ng different soil and water conservation measures like yung uh, grass water waste, contour strips, uh, diversion canals, mulching, and cover cracking. And nakalagay din dyan, uh, yung land clearing through burning is really prohibited. So meron po connection yung RA10068 with the Clean Water Act, with the Clean Air Act, with the Solid Waste Management Act. So, uh, really, uh, organic agriculture is pro-environment. Pro I just wrap it up. So, um, so, in a nutshell, so, paano nakakatulong organic farming in uh, ensuring that we have uh, good soil health? So, ito po yun. Uh, improve soil fertility through frequent organic matter inputs, uh, sustained soil cover, crop rotations. So yung crop rotations po, lagi po yung ina-emphasize, dapat nag-rotate tayo ng crops, intercropping and crop animal uh, integration. And then, uh, prevention of soil erosion and stabilization of soil structure through diversified soil cover in mobilization and forestry, improve water infiltration, reduce surface and groundwater consumption. So, bakit nakakasama yung water sa discussion? Kasi ang soil and water, hindi nyo yan pwede paghiwalayin. Pag na-degrade yung, uh, yung quality ng ating soil, eventually, yung quality ng ating tubig, ay eh, ganun din ang mangyayari. So, I want... 
Mamaya na lang siguro kung may magtanong kung kung sa uh, what we are doing at the Bureau of Soils and Water Management regarding uh, soil health management. We have programs under the BSWM OEP na nakaangta dun sa NOAP regarding uh, uh, organic input research production and utilization as well as soil fertility management in organic production systems. So we have working for facilities, so we have capacity building kami for our soil laboratory personnel, seminars, uh, okay, research R&D, we have several R&D projects in collaboration with uh, SUCs. And we, in our uh, National Soil and Water Resources uh, R&D centers, we are producing these organic inputs like vermicast and vermicompost, vermite, plant supplements, uh, mokusapur, vinegar, and biochar. Mamaya, that will be discussed by Dr. Gano Lisa in detail. So, uh, so way forward. Okay. Um, so, really, integrated nutrient management is an essential strategy in ensuring soil health in organic crop production systems. And farmers and producers should ensure that organic soil amendments are compliant with the technical requirements set in the PNS of organic soil amendments. Ano po ba yun? Uh, usually kasi pag magpapa-certify uh, ka, uh, tinitingnan yung allowable level of pathogens, allowable level of heavy metals, dun sa organic fertilizers or compost or plant supplements na ipapa-certify din mo. And dapat mag-comply lahat yun sa PNS ng OSM. Strengthen the institutional capacity of LGUs and farmers associations and cooperatives to produce and market high quality, high quality organic soil amendments through provision of organic fertilizer and compost production facilities. And ito po, uh, I was asked to present in the uh, in one of the no uh, uh, meetings, and then discuss ko rin po to prioritize the upgrading of our regional uh, soil laboratories. Because uh, last year. The Bureau of Soils uh, received uh, around 26 uh, million to upgrade its soil stuff in response to the emerging concerns on organic agriculture, so the need for heavy metal analysis, microbial identification. So, uh, and also, uh, eight regional soil stuff have received 10 million pesos uh, each to upgrade their uh, soil laboratory. Pero may naiwan pang walo. And hopefully, sa 2017 budget, I'm going to prioritize po yung ating uh, mga soil laboratories. And most especially, we need to monitor the soil health, the, the health of our soils in our farms. So it's the responsibility of organic farmer with te technical assistance from the government. So kadalasan pag may mga, I'm part of the evaluation team for the Gawad Saka and the National Organic Agriculture Achievers Award. Kadalasan when we look at the, the records of uh, those uh, organic farms, wala kayong makikita ang updated soil analysis. Kadalasan wala. Walang, walang updated na soil analysis. Lagi sasabihin sa amin kung paano. So dapat talaga, yung importance, we should get the benefit or we should check uh, regularly yung quality ng ating soils. Kung annual crops ang pinatanim mo, you could uh, have your soils analyze one or two years, every one or two years. And that yung karinyang crops naman po, every three to five years. And yun po siguro yung nakakalimutan kasi even though you are into organic farming, nakita ko may isa pala akong nakita na soil analysis report, isang organic farm, pero ang organic matter content ng Lugbanya ay nasa 2% lang. So ang, ang minimum natin is at least 3% and up for the organic matter content of our soils. Sabi ko bakit, bakit, uh, I mean, hindi, hindi, man lang, hindi man lang alam yung organic farmer na nakakaalam pa yung status ng lupa niya. And then, uh, uh, she, she continuously uh, planting uh, organic rice ng kanyang hanim. So, uh, hindi, hindi rin siya masyadong nagda-diversify. So, bakit kaya na-certify? So, uh, yun po yung ano. Uh, so, ang, ang suggestion po namin dyan, Certification body should strengthen the requirement on the submission of soil and water quality analysis. And there is a need to conduct collaborative research on soil pollution, uh, food safety, and soil remediation in Asia. This is based on the ESAP's uh, proceedings in 2007 and uh, estimation of bioavailability of heavy metals in soils and its concentration on crops. So uh, this is the tagline of uh, OA. 
So um, we, we have this SOS, Save Our Soils, uh, as part of the IYS uh, celebration, and we have the World Soil Day celebration on December 5. So this is a quote from iPhone. Uh, Farm practices that feed crops without feeding the soil and protecting its organic and living content undermine the very resource agriculture depends on, our land. And the nation that destroys its soil destroys itself. Based, this is based on a, a statement from former U.S. President uh, Franklin Roosevelt when they signed the Unified Soil and Water Conservation Law as early as 1937. Tayo ay hanggang ngayon ay nilalabi pa rin natin sa Senate na may mag-sponsor. Napasa na siya sa Congress yung Solid Water Conservation Bill, pero wala pang paper sa Senate. So with that, uh, maraming salamat po and God bless us. Thank you.